What's up, fam? It's your man, Dear All of the Second. I hope you're doing well. I want to drop another video, but before I do, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for another chance to hear your, your, your message, Lord, to feel your breath in my life, uh, to feel your mercy, to feel your peace, to feel your presence and your spirit. Father God, I know that it is you that reach people and you've allowed me to take part in ministry, which is to be of submission unto you. And Father God, I pray that I would never mistake the calling of being more important than spending intimate in relationship with you, intimate time in relationship with you. So Father, as I preach the gospel, I pray that I would be more than a preacher, but that I would practice what I preach, that I would live it out, and that people would see the Jesus in me, because they'd know without a doubt it's you that they're after. And I'm simply a vessel, a treasure, uh, excuse me, a fragile jar with a treasure on the inside, an earthen vessel. And so, Father, as I come before them, I pray that you get the glory, the honor, and the full attention and focus in this message. Holy Spirit, I invite you to come in this message and please speak to me, through me, and to the people. And I pray that the glory, all of it, goes to you, to Yeshua, who is Jesus, and to Yahweh, who is the Father. And Lord, I thank you in advance for the blessing of allowing me to take part in purpose and ministry for your glory. So you get it all, Lord. You get the praise and you get the honor. And anything in me, not of you, I repent of right now. Any sin in my life I'm dealing with, Lord, help me to overcome it. And I pray I walk in purity, holiness, and integrity and godliness in the name of Jesus the Christ, I pray. Amen. What's up, family? I want to drop something really quick. I was on my heart a little bit ago. Um, <clears throat> in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, I'm going to read it to you. It says, don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can a righteous how can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? And what union can there be between God's temple and idols? For we are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will live in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from among unbelievers and separate yourselves from them, says the Lord. Don't touch their filthy things, and I will welcome you, and I will be your father, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. And man, I wanted to bring this to you today because I know as Christians, sometimes we fear or we worry about how people may perceive us when we want to do the things of God. Sometimes we get scared or concerned that people may think that we're being judgmental or condemning judging, tearing them down. And so in fear, we compromise the integrity, integrity and the values that God has given us. And I can understand that. One thing I want to say is when you are authentic and obedient to God and you walk in line with him, even if people don't agree with you, people can see the difference between what he's calling you to do and what he may be calling them to do or what they, and what they may be doing. What am I saying? I'm not trying to talk in circles. I'm saying simply be obedient. When you approach some matters like these with humility, people could recognize it. But God, as a, as a Christian, God has called us to walk in distinction. And there are going to be some instances in your life and some places you just can't go. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some people God may have assigned you to or brought in your life and as an, as an assignment to witness to them through your life. And that's okay. That's a beautiful thing. But there are some seasons that come to an end where God may say, okay, they've chosen to be here or he may say, your time is done. Go here. He may move you. And so my point is, it's Jesus that does the saving through us. But at the end of the day, we're the vessel, we're the tool. It is him who saves people. And so sometimes when we go in certain places that God tells us not to go, we can tell ourselves, well, I'm just trying to reach the loss. And, and that may be an admirable thing. But did God tell you to go to that place? He may not have told you to go to that place. And you may have some partnerships and relationships with people where you're really tight with them and you don't want to break tithes, but God is making it clear where you're going in life and where they're going in life are two different places. And so you can't be in, in connection with them or in a fellowship with them. And so you have to make a decision. And what I've learned is when you are in wrong partnerships with people, it does affect your life. Um, what they practice in their lives, what they're doing in their lives, that spirit or those spirits will try to come and ju jump into your life and contaminate your life and take you off the beating path of righteousness. And when you have to separate, it's not you saying, I'm better than you, or I look down on you. It's you recognizing that you want to honor your God, your Lord, your Savior, Jesus. You want to be led by his spirit and be obedient to what he's called you to do. 
And sometimes in doing this, everybody can't go. But what I can say is when you do the right thing, even when you're rejected and disliked, it is still a witness for those who don't know the Lord. Because sometimes by you pulling away and doing what God said, it creates a space for God to come into their life and witness to them. See, sometimes people are afraid to make that full commitment to the Lord, and they may hold on to believers as a crutch, almost like a good luck charm. And instead of committing to God, they have you. And in a way, you can be an idol to them, which is not good. And so sometimes God says, I need to pull you away so you can get on your merry way on the journey I've called you to. But I also need to create a need in their life so that they can realize the only person who can fulfill that need is him. And so I just want to encourage you today, if you're in a situation where you are really tight with somebody, but you understand that there's a possibility that God may be calling you to set yourself apart. If you don't know how to do it, ask God to help you. He'll intervene. But my encouragement is to simply obey because there are some places you just cannot go. And when it says to be holy, it means to be set apart. There are some things you cannot take part in because it can contaminate your life and affect your life. And before long, you're caught up with all kinds of distractions and attacks in your life that you've opened doors to because you have connected with the wrong partnership. And many people can attest to this. I know I can. I've had seasons in my life where I was connected to the wrong people. And my life, I was dealing with a lot of warfare, a lot of spiritual attacks, demonic attacks, because I was with the wrong people. And when I had to make peace and got rid of, when I got rid of them or I moved myself from them, my life got better. My life got better. There were moments of consequence because some of the choices I made, but my life got better, thankfully. All glory to God. And so I want to encourage you today, be ye set apart, be ye holy, for he is holy. If you're a Christian and the spirit of God lives in you, you're called, you're set apart, you're distinct, and you can't just do everything. That's all I got for you guys today. It's hot out here in, Sac <laughs> in Cali, it's hot, so I need, to <laughs> I need to turn on some AC. But if there's anybody watching, if you don't have a personal relationship with God the Father, the only way to have one is with his son, Jesus Christ. This comes through a confession of faith and a belief in your heart that Jesus is Lord that he died on the cross, that God the Father raised him back from the dead. And if you believe this and confess it with your mouth, that you believe it in your heart, you'll be saved from the penalty of your sins and you will be born again in the righteousness of God. You will become the righteousness of God um, through Christ Jesus. In other words, your righteousness cannot get you into heaven, but his can. And by placing your faith in him, his righteousness washes away your sin. You're born again. And, the, and God the Father sees you as a child of God because you are adopted. And your name is written in the book of life. And you are headed to heaven and not hell. Um, but as I said, being a Christian, oh, sorry. Being a Christian, sometimes you're going to be under attack. You're going to be disliked. But the Bible says you are in the world and not of it. And the Bible also says be of good cheer because these things happening to you, these persecutions mean you're blessed. Because they happen to you, but they happen to the people before you as well. So that's all I got. My name is Daryl the Second. I'm on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. Get you in a Bible-based church. Watch God transform your life. Before I go, uh, I'll let you boy. My new book is on Amazon, Random Thoughts of a Believer, hardcover, paperback, Kindle. And at some point, I will definitely do audio. I pray this gets you and it blesses you. I, ah, excuse me, I'm tired. I pray you check this out and it blesses you. Gotta go. <laughs> Peace.